Hi class, welcome to week nine of Geo 108 Global Climate Change. And this week we're gonna be continuing onward with our orbital scale controls on climate change. So we're gonna be building on the Milankovitch cycles as you started learning about last week. This week we're going to be visualizing the Milankovitch cycles during our lab, which will be due on Friday and that is April 6th, so look out for that. That'll be posted very shortly. And in preparation for the material this week, which will be looking at the controls, the orbital scale controls on greenhouse gases, please read chapters 11 and 12 in your Runneman textbook. And one cool thing that we're going to be really focusing this week, oh no, cheesy pun, is our ice course. And I have posted multiple videos looking at ice sheet dynamics in Greenland, Antarctica, how you re read ice cores, uh, also how how you read like gas concentrations in ice cores and also how phytoplankton, which is plant plankton, how that can be related to reading climate change. And so to get things started, I just wanted to go through with you a little bit, a little intro into how ice sheets are formed. So continental glaciers are known as ice sheets and those cover an area that's greater than 50,000 square kilometers. And that these glaciers are built via the accumulation of snowfall. So snow falls and gets packed down over time. And now in like about the nearest 50 meters to the surface, there's some free exchange between air in the atmosphere and air that's within the little crystals of snow. So diffusion is pretty active at about um, 50 kilometers depth. As the snow gets buried deeper, it compacts more because there's more overlying weight on top. And so compared to loose snow, which has about 90% air in it, more compacted snow has maybe like 75% or so. And then as that compacts further, the snow becomes known as fern, which is made up of about 25% air. And as that com gets compacted further, we're left with ice. And this ice is tens of thousands of years old. And within it, we have these ancient bubbles of air. So these bubbles of air that contain ancient atmosphere that scientists are able to go into and read their composition. And so they're able to look at whether there's carbon dioxide present, whether there's methane present, they can look at the isotopes. So light carbon, which is the most abundant, is carbon-12. Heavier carbon is carbon-13, and these are stable, which means they do not decay over time. And we compare these ratios to figure out how carbon was moved throughout the environment in Earth history and which types of biological and physical processes came into play. Now, I have also posted in the forum some questions, so please go through and carefully think about these questions because it'll really aid to your learning. And lastly, I have the key terms sheet posted again, so there aren't very many terms you'll see this week. And as far as the concepts go, I got you started. I got you going through them. But try to build on these and come up with 
your own notes to use as a resource. So I look forward to going through your labs, reading your posts, and I hope you enjoy learning about orbital scale controls on greenhouse gases.